I'm Chen Tianxi from section of biomedical informatics and data science. Today, I'm happy to present our work about Milama large language models for medical application. So many studies have shown large language models like ChatGPT are reshaping medicine and health care by offering comprehensive health information, aiding clinical documentation, and supporting decision supporting uh, decision making processes. So let me show an impressive story I heard, uh, which shows how large language models could help with patients during diagnosis processes. So in this case, a young boy who had been experiencing chronic pain for years. So despite, despite consulting with 70 different doctors, a definitive diagnosis remains elusive. So it was ChatGPT that provided the critical insight needed, so leading to an accurate diagnosis. So let's uh, dive into the broader question. So how large language models perform on complex diagnostics? So according to a study published in JAMA, large language models like GPT-4 can uh, correctly provide diagnosis in its differential in 64% of challenging medical cases and while the accuracy for provi providing correct top diagnosis is 39%. So while these figures are impressive, uh, they underscores a crucial point that there is still a significant room for improvement. So how could we improve the capabilities of large language models for medical applications? For conventional, the key is to utilizing uh, medical data to empowering them with a comprehensive knowledge of understanding medical uh, inputs. So for, for conventionalized large language models like ChatGPT, the enhancement approach uh, often involves with retrieval augmentation uh, and fine tuning with them uh, in a closed source environment. Uh, however, it can be challenging due to their substantial model size and the closed source nature that make uh, end users to fine tune them locally. So, addressing these challenges, there is a shift for uh, the level developing open source large language models, allowing for a more flexible and hands on approach to model improvement. So these models could be improved by pre-training and fine training with instruction following ways uh, locally. So LAMA2 models are the forefront. So offering state-of-art capabilities in the general domain. So uh, our long-term goal is corrupt capable, short-term goal is long-term goal is corrupt capable AI methods for medicine and health care. So in the short term, we are focused on developing uh, powerful generative AI models specifically, specifically for medical use in the era of large language models. Uh, this is exactly the role of our current work on Milama models. So we would like to thanks for Lucilla for giving such a wonderful model names here. Milama are actually the large language models tailored for medical applications by continuous pre-training and the instruction training LAMA2 models with extensive medical data. They have versions of 13 billion and 70 billion. So for training the model, we developed the largest continuous pre-training data with 129 billion tokens and the instruction training data with over 200,000 samples from 17 data sources. And we use our evaluation benchmark involving six tasks and 14 data sets to evaluate Milama models uh, and they outperform existing large language models and even GPT-4. So uh, the figure shows the overall framework of developing a Milama model, uh, including three stages, continuous pre-training, instruction training, and the evaluation. So our pre-training data including millions of biomedical articles from PubMed and the clinical notes from mimic data sets and also general domain data. Uh, they are combined with the data ratio of 15 to 1 to 4. The instruction training data have over 200,000 medical instructions uh, ranging from 70 different data sources, for example, general domain conversations, medical conversations, biomedical literature, and the medical guidelines, and so on. 
So our evaluation benchmark has six tasks, including question answering, name entity recognition, relation extraction, classification, text summarization, and natural language inference. Uh, our pre-training process is conducted on 160 A100 GPUs, and we use Llama 2 13 billion and 70 billion model as our backbone. And they are pre-trained with one of uh, epoch around, around 100,000 GPU hours. So the instruction training is further conducted on the continual pre-trained models with three epochs on 8A100 GPUs over 1,000 GPU hours. So in the first radar graph, uh, we compare Milama with existing open source large language models uh, and medical large language models among 12 data sets from six tasks. So we can see that uh, Milama outperform all baselines in twelve out of in eleven out of, out of twelve data sets in the zero shot setting uh, in the first radar graph. And in the second radar graph, when compared to the state of art medical large language models, Meditron 70 billion model in the medical domain, uh, Milama also outperform it in eleven out of twelve data sets for few shots learning. So in the zero shot setting, we also compare the performance of Milama with GPT-4, which has significantly larger model size um, in eight biomedical data sets. So despite small, small uh, model size of Milama model, it still outperformed GPT-4 in three data sets and uh, have comparison performance uh, in four data sets and underperform it in one data set. For an interactive experience, we have developed an online demo and it can be uh, accessed through Yale VPN and the pro in the, with the provided link. So uh, we do need our audience or clinician and experts for help to engage with it and provide valuable feedback. So looking ahead, our future work actually involves in incorporating the human feedback to uh, improve it and align it with more human preferences and values to ensure its responses are grounded with factual um, correctness. So your app uh, participation is really vital um, towards building a more reliable medical AI. Uh, and in this uh, video, we showcase a typical uh, interaction with me Llama models. Um, the process begins with that we uh, agree the terms of use. So we further ask it questions uh, about side effects uh, of asthma patients tech with prednisone. Um, so it actually could give a very comprehensive list. For example, the uh, high blood pressure, uh, headache, um, trouble sleeping, and uh, so on. So, we further ask it a question that the long-term side effects. So we can see actually it also uh, responses with some possible long-term effects, including, for example, weight gain, high blood pressure, um, yeah, and so on. So uh, we will uh, release all our data uh, resources, including models uh, and the codes in this GitHub repository. So in conclusion, Milama has been the first and the largest open source large language model uh, designed specifically for the medical applications. So it uses both the largest scale of continued pre-training data from the biomedical and the clinical domain and also use the comprehensive instruction training data. So from the development of Milama model, we would like to share some lessons that we have learned. So a key takeaway is that the importance of the medical data source selection. We found that the quality and the sources of data 
uh, it's really important to improve the model's performance. And another key lesson is that it's critical to mix general domain data and the balanced ratio of general domain data and the domain specific data to prevent the knowledge forgotten issue. Uh, but we discovered that the data selection and determining the optimal data ratio is actually a complex challenge and it's not straightforward to determine and uh, usually require the um, trial and error um, empirical experiments to determine that. So apparently more efforts are required to investigate these issues. Um, Finally, we found that developing large language models with pre-training is a resource-intensive process. Uh, we estimate that to take the development of 70 BBM model, for example, um, we estimate its development can cost approximately five, more than $500,000 over uh, several hundred GPU hours. Uh, considering the rentally expenses of GPU, and uh, the cost for fine is relative small, and it's only one percentage of the continual pre-training. So in the low resources environment, we think instruction training could be a more cost-effective strategy for model improvement. So finally, we I would like to thank to our lab members and the collaborators from University of Florida who have contributed to the Milama project.